untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-red wizards deck, but it's not the typical wizards deck you might be familiar with if you've played a bit of Historic on the ladder. This isn't Curving Symmetry Sage into Dreadhorde Arcanist. Instead, we're a very controlling build that's trying to leverage the new Flame of Anor, a 3-mana instant that lets us choose one, but if we control a wizard as we cast this spell, we may choose two instead. Between drawing two cards, we can destroy an artifact or deal 5 damage to target creature. So in a very controlling build with lots of wizards, this can easily deal with an opposing threat while drawing two cards, all at instant speed. So this is an incredibly powerful addition for the archetype. And then we've got access to a few other payoffs for playing all these wizards. Wizard's Lightning can be cast for a single red if we control a wizard to deal 3 damage to any target. So we can replicate the classic end of turn bolt you, snapcaster, flashback bolt, which is incredibly satisfying once you can turn the corner to close out the game. And then Wizard's Retort can also be cast for just double blue if we control a wizard, turning into a very classic and efficient counter spell, otherwise 3 mana to counter a spell instead. And then, of course, we've got some powerful wizards to choose from. Delver of Secrets is a 1-1 human wizard. It says at the beginning of our upkeep, we can look at the top card of our library, and then we may reveal that card if it's an instant or sorcery. Then we can transform Delver of Secrets into the Insectal Aberration, a 3-2 flyer, so that can apply a lot of early pressure. Now, do keep in mind, Aberration is not a wizard anymore, so it turns into a human insect, so that can be relevant if you want to enable some of your wizard discount. But again, it's optional to transform the Delver, so you can always decline to do so. And then a Fairy Seer is a 1-1 Fairy Wizard with flying, and when it enters we get to Scry 2, so we can potentially set up the top of our deck to transform our Delver of Secrets, or to potentially find an instant or sorcery with Augur of Bolas. The 2-mana 1-3 Merfolk Wizard gets to take a look at the top 3 cards of our library when it enters, and if we can find an instant or sorcery we can reveal it and put it into our hand. The rest goes on the bottom. And then our final wizard is Snapcaster Mage, another classic, 2-1 wizard with flash, and when it enters we can give an instant or sorcery in our graveyard flashback until end of turn, and the flashback cost is equal to its mana cost, so we get to replay a 1-mana wizard sliding potentially, replay some of our other cheap removal spells, and against combo decks getting access to a 2-mana wizard's retort off a 2-mana Snapcaster Mage is also quite effective. And then of course once we get to the late game and we get to replay Flame of Anor, we can completely take over. And then we've got more counter spells with Archmage's Charm. Can either counter target spell, draw two cards, or gain control of target a non-land permanent with mana value one or less. All three modes are very relevant. And the triple blue cost is why we don't have many mountains in our mana base, since we always want to have access to triple blue on turn three. And then we've got some cheaper removal spells with two copies of Fiery Impulse. Can deal two damage early until we enable Spell Mastery by having enough instants and sorceries in the graveyard, at which point it deals three damage. And then I've also got two copies of Strangle to immediately deal three damage to a creature or planeswalker. Can be very important against the opposing blue-red wizard aggro deck, which has a lot of three toughness creatures. The drawback is that it's a sorcery, so it's not quite as flexible when we're trying to keep up our other instants. And then we also have two copies of Fading Hope to bounce a creature and potentially scry one as well. We can also use it to save our own creature from removal so we can then replay it. Sometimes the opponent will present a creature that's too large for our burn spells to handle, and then having Fading Hope as another answer can be quite nice. Thinking of a creature equipped by Colossus Hammer, for example, even though now with Flame we have another answer to artifacts in the main deck, which can also be quite useful in that matchup. And then we've got even more card advantage with Expressive Iteration. Now this card is amazing and you could easily play the full playset, but because we're a deck that's trying to keep up counter spells as early as turn 2 if we play a turn 1 Delver or Fairy Seer, we can already keep up a turn 2 Wizard's Retort, which is why I put it in the 2-drop slot here. Then we may not want to tap out early for Iteration when we want to keep up our counter spells and other instants instead. So Iteration does lose a bit of value, but once we're in the late game and we can cast it alongside our other counter spells, it becomes another powerhouse. And then we also have four copies of Seagate Restoration, which is a sorcery, which is important when it comes to transforming Delver of Secrets or potentially finding something with Augur of Bolas, so it does increase our hit rate, but at the same time we can also play it as a land, and occasionally in the late game you can cast the 7 mana sorcery to draw a few extra cards, but it doesn't come up very often. The drawback of course being that if we want to play it untapped as a land, we'll have to pay 3 life but that's the cost of doing business. Then our mana base also has lots of blue-red dual lands that enter the battlefield untapped early with Steam Vents, Spire Bluff, and Sheevan Reef. 
The pathway is also pretty useful, but we typically want to play it on the blue side to make sure we have triple blue for charm, but in a pinch it can also make red mana. And then Stormcarved Coast, don't want to play too many copies because it will enter tapped early, and our deck is playing a relatively low land count, so we can't afford to draw too many copies. And then two basic islands in case we need to search those up, and then a Soaring City and Crucible offer a tiny bit more utility. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. We're on the play with a keepable hand up against a Gigantha companion deck. So turn one, kind of like the idea of playing Delver and then turn two Delver plus Fairy Seer to set up the transformation for both of them. And then we probably need to look for some interaction, whether it's counter spells or removal. Opponents on the classic Wizards deck and uh, finding an impulse is nice doesn't take out a Symmetry Sage, but it's still good interaction to have access to. Let's play a Fairy Seer. And then Charm on top. Could transform Delver, but then I would miss my land drop. So do I prioritize transforming Delver? I think it's still better to hit my land drop and then be able to cast Flame. And then I'll keep the Charm afterwards. Plenty of wizards in play, so we should be able to cast this uh, flame for full value, taking out Symmetry Sage, drawing two. And then we're getting closer to a three damage impulse, which will take care of future Sages and Dreadhorde Arcanists. And Lightning takes care of Aberration. That's okay. We're here to play the long game. Our opponent's the aggro deck in the matchup. Don't expect any real counter spells from our opponents. Small chance they're playing spell peers, but typically not a card you see. Play this on blue to have triple blue for charm. Get in for two, and then could wait on playing the flame, although Cassigan now has the advantage of potentially denying a wizard for the opponent to enable wizard lining for one mana, or the uh, two mana mentor's guidance, which is also quite good in that deck. So I think I just go for it now. Our opponent had another wizard lining after all. Alright, that's fine. Would not mind hitting my land drops going forward, so a snapcaster can potentially get back our flame as well. But now impulse is much closer to dealing three damage. Discharge our seer, okay. Trying to take us off having wizards in play. I think charm to draw to is fine, as opposed to playing Augur. Just trying to hit my land drop, and then now we can keep up Fiery Impulse. Our opponent knows about it, so they may not play a creature into it, but that's fine. Just don't want to fall behind on board if our opponent plays Dreadheart Arcanist and gives it haste with a Reckless Charge, gets back Discharge. That would be a lot of damage we can prevent with Fiery Impulse. Soulscar Mage could potentially grow out of range from a 3 damage Impulse. And another one, so now Impulse can take care of it. can also steal a Soulscar Mage with a Charm. We want to avoid a scenario where opponent can kill Snapcaster Mage in response to its targeting Flame, because then we won't have a Wizard in play, and there's a small window where they can take out Snapcaster before we can flash back. So playing Augur of Bolas first makes sense. Then we can still keep up Charm. And a Wizard's Retort's nice too. So I could just Impulse the Soul's card now. I think I'll wait. Mentor's Guidance. We probably want to respond here. How about we steal Soul's Car Mage? That's also an extra Wizard for our various Wizard synergies. And there's another soul scar. Okay, so now Snapcaster get back flame. Probably gonna be enough for a concession, but we'll see. Could have stolen the soul scar again. But let's keep the cards flowing. Tap 
untapped spire bluff first, untapped steam vents. So let's go with a tapped canal. And then next turn we can iterate, keep up retort, keep up impulse. Opponents can iterate themselves, but they're very far behind on mana, so they can't quite leverage iteration as well as we can. Next turn we can just dig for more action, play with fire their own soul scar mage. And another snapcaster. Yeah, that's just gonna be too much value. So Wizards Lightning in hand, or can just go face with it now, and then maybe hang on to how about a Seagate Restoration could actually cast it next turn. Fire off Lightning at her face. Snapcaster can also get it back. Okay. So we got lucky to be on the play in this matchup. Sometimes you can be on the draw. Opponent has a quick start of Symmetry Sage followed by Arcanist. You may not have the right removal spell to take them out. And then uh, you can find yourself dead before you manage to stabilize. But uh, yeah, especially with an early Strangle or a Wizard and a Wizard's Lightning, it's usually not too difficult to stabilize. Just gotta find those early removal spells. Lightning Snapcaster Mage, that's all right. Three damage end of turn, and then three more from the attack step with a counter spell to protect. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems pretty decent. Turn one Fairy Seer, can keep up her turret on turn two already. And then Snapcaster is never a bad card to keep. Could also put a Restoration second, so we're guaranteed to hit it with Augur of Bolas. Maybe that's not a bad idea. So we'll draw a Snapcaster and then probably tap out for Augur. If we really feel like we need to keep up Retort, we can still do that. And our opponent might be on a Charbelcher deck. So having a counter spell is incredibly important, but we don't need to keep it up on turn two. And we found an Archmage's Charm. That's probably preferred over Restoration here. And of course, Spike Field Hazard could still be a different deck, but I'm gonna put our opponent on Charbelcher, especially with not having a companion. And yeah, the Treachery also points in that direction. So technically our opponent could already kill us next turn with an Iron Crack Feet into Charbelcher Activate. So I'm going to go ahead and play this Steam Vents untapped. They know about Archmage's Charm, so they have to play around it. And in the meantime, we can beat down. Could fire it off to draw two, just to hit my land drop since we have Retort and then Snapcaster on Retort. Opponent could, of course, also have the zero mana counter spell, Pact of Negation, to back up the combo, but we can just wait for them to cast Iron Crack Feet, and then they can no longer cast another spell afterwards. Fable of the Mirror Breaker is definitely worth interacting with, although I could just bounce the token next turn with Fading Hope. So I might still want to draw two here. And then I can maybe even Fading Hope in my upkeep to scry. Since I wouldn't mind an extra land drop or counter spell. So I'll keep the retort. And then we can hit for two. Play Delver, keep up retort. And now a snapcast retort is also an option. We'll eventually need to deal with the uh, reflection. That's a downside of not just countering the fable here. Their opponent playing Valakut Awakening means their hand is pretty good. Otherwise they would maybe try and cast it to improve their hand. And a Charbelcher we will certainly counter. So expecting a second copy next turn. And I could play another Delver. I think I keep up Snapcaster on Retort. That way I get to for sure add a two-powered creature to the board. And worst case scenario, I can get back Fading Hope to Bounce Reflection, which I guess I also could have combined with the Delver of Secrets. 
Iron Crank feats. Okay, so we'll let that resolve and then we'll just uh, counter the Charbelcher they play next. Since Feet only lets them cast one more spell this turn. So that also plays around a Pact of Negation, should they have one in hand. Creativity, so yep, Snapcaster, get back Retort. And this is definitely one of those matchups where the classic Wizards deck may fall short since it doesn't have access to any counter spells. And if our opponent has a good draw, they can just win on turn 3 with Make a Treasure and then turn 3 Feet into Charbelcher Activate. Whereas at least we have access to 8 counter spells and ways to destroy artifacts as well. So don't quite have lethal since there's no burn spells in sight, but we're not going to struggle to close out the game between another counter spell and our current board state. So I'll pass it back. And march, pitching a couple cards, that's fine. And yeah, opponent is playing with Pact of Negation, but they seem to be out of options now. Strike it rich, flashed back, that's fine. And then I can just Fading Hope the Reflection, opponent can take out Snapcaster with a Spike Field or a Fairy Seer, doesn't really matter. Can just counter and Fading Hope. Okay. Sweet. Dismantle Charbelcher combo onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Turn one Fairy Seer or Delver sets up turn two Retort. And then we've got a Charm on three. A Gaze, so points towards maybe a Graveyard combo deck. If it's kind of the self mill deck, that could be an issue since. Counter spells aren't the best in this matchup. Early pressure is how we win the game. So probably start with a Delver, which can maybe transform, although then we're shields down or retort since it would no longer be a wizard. Wayfinder can mill more stuff. If they find an Archimiba, they can get the Amalgam back. For now, just two copies of Amalgam in a Graveyard. And Fading Hope on top. So, interesting position. I can transform Delver to have my early pressure, but then we lose our counter spell. I think I still need the early pressure more. So let's reveal, play Fairy Seer, and then I can at least bounce one of the Amalgams if they put them in play. And another Retort doesn't seem great, and don't need Fairy Seer. Want to look for Wizard's Lightning, more Delvers of Secret. Salvage happens. And still no Narcomiba at least to enable the Amalgams. Jace of course another way to mill a ton of cards at once. And Stitcher Supplier to mill three more. Can we dodge another bullet here? We do. Driven to Despair, also a good one to keep in mind since it can make us discard. Don't feel the need to bounce any of the opponent's creatures. Could potentially bounce my own Fairy Seer, but also doesn't seem necessary. There's our Wizard's Lightning. So hit for 4 in the air, and we've got our opponent on a pretty fast clock. They've taken a bit of damage themselves with a Shock Lines. So play this untapped. And then pass with Lightning and Retort available. Salvage I will happily counter. Take two. Lightning down to five. And there's our Delver. Put the point to one. Play Delver and have a charm available. Could also use it to steal a supplier, but more likely to counter another enabler here. And our opponent explodes, so yeah, we got pretty lucky to dodge an early Narcomiba, or maybe even a Creeping Chill, which could have gained the opponent more life and enable some graveyard synergies like Silver Smote Ghoul. But yeah, overall, if you've got early pressure and can back it up with a few key counter spells, that's always a good recipe to beat combo decks. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is fine, although missing a one mana wizard means it may take a second to get the lightning and retort online. But I'm always okay playing a turn two snapcaster mage just to get them online. So let's go with tapped steam vents over tapped restoration. Opponents, what looks to be a mono white deck. And that field of ruin could actually be effective since we don't have basic mountain in the deck. And nine lives. Okay, so that's the type of deck. Fair enough. Flash and Snapcaster Mage. Opponent's gonna try and combine nine lives with another enchantment solemnity to prevent losing the game pretty much. Now Soaring City is actually a way to bounce an enchantment, so that could come in handy. So just hit for two, add a counter to the nine lives, keep up our retort. And with double retort and a snapcaster, we can counter the opponent's next three relevant spells. Idyllic Tutor. I could let Resolve, since their opponent is just going to search something up, and then I can just counter whatever they searched up. So, sure, they can keep the Tutor, and then I can just use my mana on a Wizard's Lightning here. And that added counter to the Nine Lives. So it looks like I'm okay just playing the Soaring City as opposed to keeping it to bounce an enchantment. Can even Fading Hope my Snapcaster to retort again. And there's a Solemnity. Gets countered. And I don't think I need to bounce Snapcaster. Get in for two. And then try to deploy Snapcaster or Retort as soon as possible. Immortal Sun seems worth countering as well. So Nine Lives gonna be up to six counters soon. Picked up another counter spell. And a Wrath of God. So if we counter this, there's the risk that our opponent just resolves a Solemnity, and then we're out of luck. So I probably need to let this happen, but I could Fading Hope a Snapcaster at least. And then we'll still have a 3 mana counter available. And I could also Snapcaster replay Wizard's Lightning end of turn, if they don't make me counter anything. Another Wizard's Lightning, I don't think I want to keep on the off chance that our opponent uses Field of Ruin on my Steam Vents. Opponent looking to use the Field of Rune here. That's okay. So flow to red. Get our second island. And then we can Snapcaster. Well, did uh, not mean to use the red mana there. So now we can't Wizard's Lightning. That's okay. Could flash in another Snapcaster. And then... Put our point to eight counters and then have two counter spells up. That's probably good enough as well. Hang on to Delver on the off chance they go for another Wrath of God. And then approach doesn't matter since their opponent loses the game if uh, nine lives goes off. So them gaining seven doesn't make a difference. So does their eventual win condition once they establish the lock with nine life solemnity, and our opponent explodes? Awesome! On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Our hand seems keepable. Turn one, play fairy seer. Try to scry to another untapped land, perhaps. Double flame. Those are difficult to turn down, although it is not a land. Maybe keep one of them. And then next turn I can still play a burn spell, play a tapped ghost. Happily take out an elf. Another elf. And a sentinel, so this is elf tribal. 
And against Elf Tribal, we just have to watch out for Collected Company. That's one of the key cards we need to counter. Otherwise, just keep killing their creatures and try to 2 for one our way to victory. So we could Flame and draw to take out a Sentinel, perhaps, since it can block Fairy Seer. Although I guess if we take out Elf, Sentinel doesn't necessarily make mana by itself. So that might be better for now. And there's our retort to maybe counter a company. And that's the main thing we're preventing by killing Helenor Elves as opposed to Sentinel, is them not having 4 mana for Collected Company and forcing them to play creature first. Okay, Circle of Dreams Druid is pretty dangerous, so that has to go. And then we can keep up Retort. I could also take out another Elf here, which is also reasonable, but I don't mind keeping some removal for another Lord-type creature. So let's take out the Circle of Dreams, maybe with a Wizard Slimming. I doubt we're going face anytime soon. And that way I have the flexibility of casting Impulse for 3 damage, even if we don't have a Wizard somehow. And then just play this tapped and hit for 1. Playing it untapped would have given me the flexibility of maybe flashing in Snapcaster and playing a Burn spell if they start attacking here, but I doubt that's going to be the case. Elite is fine. It does leave behind a token, which can be annoying, but it's not super scary. And a Shepherd. So Shepherd is going to make their spells uncounterable, and itself is also uncounterable, so that's something that definitely needs to die to an impulse. So slightly inefficient use of mana there by playing the tamped steam vents. Now we could iteration and then likely find a land or one mana spell that I can play and then we can still keep up retort. Or we can go with a snapcaster to try and control the board a little bit more, which is maybe better. And we'll keep Fairy Seer back for now, happy to trade for a 1-1 one, one Elf. Okay, Visionary, that one's a little scarier, although we can still kill it with Snapcaster. So maybe let that resolve. Since they're empty-handed, they won't draw extra cards with it this turn. And then let them attack, Snapcaster, Flame, kill Visionary, and trade off. Alright, we've got our backup wizard, so Fairy Seer can trade, and we'll trade for Elite as well. With Fading Hope we could potentially bounce our own Snapcaster, and that can be pretty fun, but I don't think it's going to be necessary. So let's start with Iteration. Finding another Iteration in hand, and then Impulse we want to cast right now. Although I guess it does go shield down on Wizard's Retort since we don't have the Wizard in play right now. But that's fine. Take out the Elvish Mystic. Play Fairy Seer. And I'll definitely keep the Charm. Good Fading Hope, let's say the token here. That way I'm guaranteed to prevent a Collected Company next turn. Although it could turn out poorly for opponent, draw some other impactful 3 mana creature, I don't get to counter it. And then at least now we can bounce and counter on the way down. So if I trade off Fairy Seer I won't have a wizard for the discount on wizard's retort, but that might be alright. So we'll trade. And then Iteration can maybe hit our land drop. Find Fading Hope, Wizard's Lightning, land. So in hand I'll put Wizard's Lightning. And then we'll play the land right now. And then we have Wizard's Retort for Clan Caller. Or we could just kill it with a Wizard's Lightning, which is also fine. Could also steal the Sentinel with Charm, but I kind of prefer drawing two. And 
and our opponent has seen enough. Yeah, they still need to battle through a couple counter spells and two for ones. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems pretty decent. Turn one Delver can interact with Fading Hope, and then we've got our Flame ready to two for one. Opponent on a Lurus deck. Blue black could be rogues. And can play a turn to Augur of Bolas for now. Get in for one. And I'll take three since I may want to hang on to Soaring City. And Augur misses, yeah. It's not super likely to miss, but sometimes it is just a two mana one three. Enforcer, of course, mills a nice uh, card we could have gotten with Augur. Can still maybe get it back with a Snapcaster Mage later. Opponent passes. And there's just going to be another Fairy Seer, which can help transform Delver, although our opponent's likely to mill whatever we keep on top. So I'm going to attack and offer a trade for Enforcer. If our opponent flashes in a blocker, we can Fading Hope. Opponent trades. That's fine. And a Fatal Push anyways. So we could have Fading Hope our own Delver, which is reasonable. I can replay Delver and Fairy Seer. Bouncing our own Augur could also be good value if we can find a spell with it. Charm will keep on top. Although there's a high likelihood of it getting milled. So do I take three again? They'll start adding up, but sure. And we'll keep both on top. And then at least if our opponent mills these, we may be able to get them back with a Snapcaster later. Just another Fatal Push. If we can draw the Charm, we could maybe steal the Enforcer. But a Windrobber is going to mill too. Alright, so we could channel one of our lands. We could cast Flame, although our opponent does have two mana available. So it may not actually work out. Six cards in Graveyard. This gets bigger if our opponent has eight or more cards in our Graveyard. So that's also close to potentially getting bigger. I think I'll play the Crucible. I don't think the 1-1s are going to make a huge difference, but we may want to bounce something. And just pass for now. Opponent does not tap out. And Wind Robber attacks. Milling us for one more. Opponent's being patient. Yeah, I think we have to do the same here. Finally transform Delver, and now we can keep up Flame with Retort Backup. Opponent flashes in a Soaring Thought Thief, so we'll let that resolve. And then now we can try to Deal 5 damage, draw 2. Take out Thought Thief. And if they counter, we can counter back. Opponent does still have a larger Enforcer here, but we got to draw 2, and now Charm's looking great. We'll eventually need to find an answer to Lurus as well. 
For now, Aberration attacks. There's just going to be a Trump and Sacrifice. And these both seem great. Opponent does nothing. Wind Robber would mill two. So I could try to draw two in response. And if it resolves, then I can impulse the Enforcer. But uh, chances are pretty high that our opponent's got a counter spell in hand. But I guess it's not getting any better. So let's try it. And I make disappear. That's too bad. Could have potentially paid for it had we waited a little bit longer. Enforcer is going to start turning sideways. We'll take it. And iteration was perfect. Another nice two for one. And let's see here. In hand. Probably, let's see, three, six. Yeah, we're not close to casting a good restoration. So, Wizard's Lightning in hand. And then we can cast a Fairy Seer right now. Even though this cry is counteracted by the rogues pretty well. So, play Fairy Seer, see what's up. And those both seem great. Flame on top. And attack all out. I'm okay trading for Wind Robber. Opponent might just jump and sacrifice again. And then I'm tempted to Lightning the Enforcer in response, make it less likely that our opponent can mill or flame. Untapped Watery Grave, Alurus in hand, two mana left. Do we get to draw? We do. Attack all out. And hope our opponent taps out here. And drown. Alright, so we don't get to kill a creature. So, we could just draw two with flame and then counter. That's an option. I think we let that resolve and just deal three. And try and get a 2 for 1 with flame by killing a creature as well. I guess technically a 3 for 1, since we get to draw 2 as well. Hive could be an issue later. For now, our opponent plays Lurus, and we'll see if they immediately replay something. They're being patient. So now we just want to take our draw step first so we can counter an opposing counter spell and make sure we kill this Lurus. And a drown gets retorted. And a snapcaster is exactly what we were looking for. Okay, get in for three. And then, yeah, that's too much value for the opponent to overcome. So despite a bit of a rough start, the two for ones from Flame eventually got us there. Alright, so we get to see our controlling blue-red wizards in action, and I'm quite pleased with how it turned out. The wizard deck now has a variant that's better against opposing combo decks, as you have access to all these counter spells to disrupt the opponent's game plan. The flip side is that you lose some of the explosiveness of the more aggressive blue-red wizards build, so if you're up against, let's say, an opposing control deck, I might prefer being on the blue-red wizard aggro game plan, which can hope to deal damage early and close out the game with a few burn spells, as opposed to this more controlling variant, which may end up falling short against opposing control decks that are also built to take over the late game. So that's of course a trade-off you make, but generally speaking I don't encounter a ton of control decks in Historic, so you're more likely to face other creature aggro decks or combo decks, so that's where this deck should be pretty well positioned. But yeah, for now I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.